Bring Back Rock. and welcome to Bring Back Rock. My favorite thing to do here is either turn people on to new music or turn them on to bands they may have forgotten about. But every once in a while I want to talk about bands we all know and love. So I had a Motley Crue video started, but on Trunk Nation on Sirius XM they just had the top 20 Motley Crue songs of all time. And I wanted to put my two cents in. So I kind of put that video on hold. We're doing the top 20 Motley Crue songs of all time. One thing I learned from the caller lists, um, Certain ones were on almost every list. Dr. Feelgood, Wild Side, Saints of Los Angeles, Livewire. But a lot of it was all over the place, too, which is the way it should be. Music touches you personally, and you like what you like. So I kind of put that video on hold. I'm doing my top 20 Motley Crue songs of all time. And how I did it, you can do it any way you want if you want to make a list. Um, I did not write every Motley Crue song. I wrote every Motley Crue album and then just put down the songs that immediately came to me that I love off of that album. And then I ranked those. Sometimes there was none or one. Sometimes there was four or five. So I took those songs, I ranked them as my top 20, and I'm going to share them with you right now. The top 20 greatest Motley Crue songs of all time. Let's get to it at number 20 off of Dr. Feel Good. I have a song that I'll be honest, probably isn't one of my top 20 Motley Crue songs. And there's probably even songs off of Dr. Feel Good I like better than it that didn't make the list. But what made the list is the performance. You can just feel the adrenaline coursing through the performance. It's like a freight train going way too fast down the track. You're sure it's going to derail at any moment, but they hold it together. It's a real live feeling that they got in the studio, which is hard to do. The performance is the reason this makes the list. At number 20, Kickstart My Heart. Off of the self-titled album, the only Motley Crue album without Vince Neil on vocals. It just doesn't feel like Motley Crue without Vince on vocals. That doesn't mean there aren't some great songs, and one that I really dug, I have at number 19, Poison Apples. Next up, we have a song off the only album that Tommy Lee did not play on. They did, however, get Randy Castillo played with people like Ozzy and Lita Ford, great drummer. And I really like this album. There's a few songs on there I considered, but I decided to go with the first single off the album. It just felt like it could fit in with that Girls, 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 Dr. Feelgood era of Motley Crue at number 18, Hell on High Heels. Now, I've sung in a couple bands, and I just love singing along with this song. This is off the self-titled Motley Crue album. It has Glenn Hughes on background vocals. It has John Karabi on lead vocals, and it has me on lead vocals anytime this comes on in my car. At number 17, this is Misunderstood. Next up off the Girls, Girls, Girls album. This was a huge hit for the guys. It was the first video, and the video was all about strippers and motorcycles, and there's nothing wrong with that. The title track, Girls, 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 comes in at 16. Next up is the first song off of the debut album, Too Fast for Love. This was a late addition to my list. It's got a cool verse. It's got a cool chorus. They don't really seem like they should go together, but somehow they make it all work, and you got to love that cowbell. At number 15, Come On and Dance.
This is the second song off of Girls, Girls, Girls. There's a few deep cuts I really like on this record. I chose this one. It's written about Tracy Lords, the actress. She's a singer, but she's most famous for using a fake ID to become an adult film star well before she at the age of 18. This one is All in the Name of. Motley Crue released a lot of extra songs off of greatest hits records, box sets, re-releases, etc. And this is one of those, off of Decade of Decadence. Some people might find this a little poppy. I just find it catchy as hell. This is Angela at number 13. This is the first entry off of Shout at the Devil. I love the drum intro. I love the way this song moves full speed ahead. The song is just red hot, and it is red hot, and it is number 12. This song was written about a therapy technique and was one of the new songs off the Decade of Decadence Greatest Hits album. Now, I always thought if you wanted to see what the Motley Crue album would sound like with Vince Neil on vocals, you could look at this track and get an idea. This has become a huge video hit, a Motley Crue fan favorite, and is in their set every night. At number 11, Primal Scream. This was one of my favorite songs off of Dr. Feel Good before it became a single and a big video hit for the guys. The video was recorded at Alpine Valley in East Troy, Wisconsin. Off of Dr. Feel Good at number 10, Same Old Situation. When I first heard this song, I thought Motley Crue hit one out of the park. This is the one song in the, that can really stand up to the classic Motley Crue songs of the 80s. The title track of their last album, Saints of Los Angeles, comes in at number nine. Next up, we have a song and single that was huge for Motley Crue. I'm not going to go into just how huge the video was. I do go into that a little bit on another video of mine called Biggest 80s Ballads by 80s Bands, if you want to check that out. But suffice it to say, after the success of this record and this um, video, every hard rock band afterwards had had at least one, sometimes two ballads on every album trying to replicate this success. At number eight, off of Theater Pain, Home Sweet Home.
Next up, off of the Too Fast for Love album, a song that just grabbed me right off the bat. I loved this song the first time I heard it. The self-titled track, Too Fast for Love, comes in at number seven. When you first drop the needle on Motley Crue's sophomore release, Shout at the Devil, and the intro track in the beginning, followed by the track Shout at the Devil came on, Motley Crue came off as a dark, dangerous, and exciting band, and you knew you were in for a hell of a listen. At number six, Children of the Beast, is that title track, Shout at the Devil. But in the This song introduced a lot of us to Motley Crue. Between the song itself and the video, you were wondering what the hell is going on, and you had to have more. Off of their debut album, the debut single comes in at number five, Live Wire. This may be my favorite Motley Crue deep track. I love the way it started out their third album. It had a great groove and cool lyrics that Vince delivered perfectly. Let me tell you, with Cats in the Alley and Rats in My Snakeskin Boots, at number four, we have City Boy Blues. So I First time I heard this song, I loved it, as did most Motley fans. It's got a great riff, great performances all around, and really, the sound was amazing. The title track off of Motley Crue's fifth album comes in at number three, Dr. Feel Good. If your first introduction to Motley Crue, like many of us, was Shout at the Devil, this may have been the first song and first video you saw by them. And it was glorious. At number two, Looks That Kill. had this at number three and Dr. Feelgood at number one and flip-flopped them at the last minute. It wasn't my favorite song right off the bat off of Motley Crue's Girls, Girls, Girls album, but quickly grew on me. And the video totally captures the anarchy and energy of a live Motley Crue show. My number one Motley Crue song is Wild Side. So 
well, that's it. The 20 greatest Motley Crue songs of all time. If you want to tell me what I got right or wrong in the comments below, go ahead. If you want to drop your own list down there or get in touch with me and let me know what you think, I'd appreciate that too. If you want to make my day, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I appreciate everybody who took the time to watch. And we'll catch you on the next video.